This video is a follow-up video to the one-year review I made two years ago about my Clutch ST80i welder. Over the past two years, it has become one of the most viewed videos on this channel, but if for some reason you haven't seen it, I'll link it in the description as well as put a card to the video on screen now. I have to warn you though that it will be a little cringy. Regardless, now that I've had this welder for three years, I thought I'd put together a similar video to my one-year review of this machine. While I might reiterate most of what I said in the one-year review, I'll try and keep those parts as short as possible without excluding any info. Mostly, I want to add on some things that I didn't have in the old video. Now before I start, I want to make it clear that the model of welder that I have, that I own, that I purchased three years ago, is no longer available for purchase. The seller, Northern Tool, has phased out the model I own in favor of a newer one with fully functioning lift dark TIG mode. Also, this video is in no way sponsored by a Northern Tool. I'm just a hobbyist out here giving their opinion. Now I guess I'll start by briefly mentioning a few things that were in the previous video. First up, the size and weight of the unit. It's about the size of a toaster and weighs about as much as a 10 pound box of stick electrodes. Combined with the fact that this welder is powered by your standard wall outlet, it is incredibly portable. It can be thrown into a small toolbox and taken just about anywhere with 110 or 120 volt power. The power cord on this machine is decently long considering the price point and the power switch is covered in a protective boot, just a layer of plastic to protect it, which is a nice touch. The front panel is really simple as well. It's just got the two DINs plugs, an amperage control knob, and two lights, one to show that the power is on and one for overtime. This machine uses the small DINs plugs, which can be easier to replace than a welder with hardwired cables since you don't have to open up the machine. The amperage knob itself does not feel cheap and it's easy to turn, but it's not loose enough to the point where it'll just turn on its own and not hold an amperage. The cables are about standard length for most new stick welders and the original stinger lead and ground clamp work but they do feel a little subpar and that's why I replaced them. As for how this unit welds, it still welds just as smooth as it did the day I got it, albeit a little bit smoother just because my skill has improved. It stick welds super smooth and it absolutely loves to weld with 7018, especially Excalibur 7018. The TIG arc is just as smooth as the stick arc and I will have some background footage showing both. It really does feel just as good as any other DC welders that I've used, which admittedly is a very short list at this point. Now on to the gripes I have about this machine. This list was very, very short in the original review and it's really what I want to build on in this video. Think of this as more of a list of criticisms than a list of things I hate about this unit. I'm just trying to constructively criticize how this unit is built and made and they're things that I think you guys should know. First off, it does use the small DINs plugs. Now, I did say that the fact that this welder uses DIN plugs is a positive, but it uses the smaller versions of these plugs, which as far as I know, are not standard as the larger variety is. However, they're still fairly easy to track down online. The stock leads are kind of wimpy as well. They're pretty short, but again, that's pretty standard for most stick welders, but they are about the thickness of an extension cord, which is functional for this machine, but an upgrade sometime down the road is definitely recommended. The little boot that protects the power switch on the back, while it's a great feature and something I didn't expect to see, stiffens up in cold weather, making it really, really hard to operate the switch, especially with welding gloves on. Along the same lines, the power cord, while fairly thick for the price point, is a plastic, not a rubber cord, which again, causes it to get really stiff in cold weather. Now this might just be me, but the auto adaptive hot start seems to be a little off and on for me. Again, it's probably most likely me being bad at stick welding, but this machine seems to stick rods more than the few other welders that I've used. It also might be the fact that this welder is a much lower amperage than the welders that I have used. The auto arc force, or whatever it's called, also seems kind of janky. At times, to me, it feels just like a placebo effect. But again, it's most likely just me. As for TIG, this machine is advertised as a lift start unit. It's not. This unit is a plain and simple scratch start machine. The model that replaces this one does, however, have a lift start mode. I also want to refute a claim I made in the one year review. When talking about how it TIG welds, I said something along the lines of, this machine can TIG weld 3 16 material, no problem. I was referring to the background footage of me welding some thicker walled square tube. And this statement is just simply not true. It can TIG thicker material definitely, but it's going to require a lot of material prep. You're gonna to have to bevel whatever you're welding to the extreme. Realistically, the most this machine will ever be able to easily TIG weld without much material prep is about an eighth of an inch, and even that's gonna be kinda of slow, from my experience, depending on the joint configuration. That's about it for this video. I really hope that this gave some more accurate information than the one you review, and I also hope that I increased the production value and quality of this video. I do want to try and outdo all of my old videos quality-wise, 
because if anything, a lack of effort on my part in filming, especially editing, just plain irritates me. That's why this video has taken so long to come out, among many other things. I originally had it just as a live commentary with me holding the camera, and something just didn't sit right with me. It didn't fit within how I see, how I think a quality video should be, and how I think my videos should be, so I just scrapped the entire thing, deleted all the footage, and here we are. Anyways, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you want more videos like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. That's all from me, and hopefully, maybe, I'll see you guys next week.